this week okay. on, on Dropping the Needle. We're joined by our brand new co-host, Izzy Presley, who isn't here to intro the show because <laughs> he had to leave to go take a dump. So imagine that scene in um, Dumb and Dumber when Jeff Daniels is on the toilet. That's what hap- what's happening to Izzy right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Hilarious. But uh. we, we sit down. We talk about Sebastian Bach. We kind of opened his mouth, spoke, inserted foot, and said some pretty stupid things about Facebook mm-hmm. and we fans. Discuss. So we discuss on Dropping the Needle. Everybody, welcome to another episode of Dropping the Needle. I am one of your three co-hosts, Michael Branvold, and joined by Tommy Summers, who started with us in our last episode. And we want to welcome our brand new co-host, Izzy Presley. Izzy, how are you? I'm all right. Uh, I was kind of happy that the uh, the hair and makeup gal you guys sent over for me uh, also did massages with happy endings, so I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you. <laughs> did, did you did you notice the huge Adam apple? Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> it is California. I encourage yeah. you never to do a reach around with the, <laughs> the, the people we send over because you yes. might be surprised. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep my paws so, to so for those of you who um, have been longtime listeners of Dropping Needle, um, our last episode, we welcome Tommy as a new third co-host joining myself and original co-host Mitch LaFon. Well, Mitch LaFon is no longer with the show. Mitch has moved on. He's doing his own things. You can find him on Spreaker and iTunes and Facebook. Just look up Mitch LaFon and you'll find his own shows. Um, you know, wish him the best of luck. He wanted to focus much more on interviewing artists and talking about their latest endeavors and what they're doing and what they're promoting. And I'll be honest, I have zero interest in doing that. I, I I enjoy talking to artists, but promoting stuff just really, I, I'd, I'd rather just chat with them, like a bunch of guys chatting. Again, the whole premise of this show, if you follow us on three sides of the coin, we, we think of this as a bunch of guys sitting in a bar and watching a hockey game and, uh, you know, <laughs> and drinking some beer and talking about music. And that's it. And, you know, it, it's very low-key. It's very relaxed. So we want to keep it that way. So, Izzy, welcome. Um, why don't you take uh, 30 seconds, tell everybody where you come from, and where's the name Izzy Presley come from? Well, I'm, I'm originally from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Oh, and, Jesus, uh, another Minnesota. Yeah, but I'm, I'm living in Hollywood now. Okay, and, smart man. He's left and moved to California. I got out this year, which is actually the best year to do it because you guys had that, or Tommy knows, you guys had that horrible, horrible winter that's still going yeah. on. But um, It snowed like last weekend, didn't it? Uh, maybe just a little bit. I don't care if it was even it a was little just, bit. It still yeah. snowed in like yeah. the end of April. I'm just um, completely immune to it at this point. I'm stuck. But, There's nothing I can do. Well, I, I was smart. I got out. Um, I, I was uh, I was a... Uh, Drive time radio host on Rockin' 101 for a couple years uh, in the afternoons. I had a morning show on Sundays called Under the Covers with Izzy Presley, which is all cover songs, which was a lot of fun, especially because I got to pick all the songs. And uh, I was a sports and music director for RX Magazine in St. Cloud for eight, better part of eight years. So, yeah, that's kind of where I come from. So what are you doing now? What are you doing in, in, um, in, in I, L.A.? I, uh, I have a temp gig right now with a... Um, large music company, and I got my own podcast uh, called Another Effin' Podcast, which you can also find on Spreaker and on YouTube, and that's kind of what I got rolling. Oh, I have a PR company also. Yeah, you're doing, you're, you're, yes. let, 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 full you disclosure, he's doing PR for us. He does PR yep. for Three Sides of the Coin. Sides he's of done the an coin. amazing job landing us yep. some radio interviews and, and press coverage and stuff like that. So, you he know, he knows music inside and out. He so knows like, music okay, inside and out. Guy. So, you know, just uh, literally a, a, a honest plug if you're, a, if you're an artist or somebody in entertainment looking for somebody to help you with even just one little press release. Appreciate or that. a media campaign, check out Izzy. He's he, he he knows his stuff. He's got the contacts. He's done wonders for three sides of the coin in the last couple months that he's been doing. Yes, it for us. So, I would agree. Uh, IzzyPresleyProductions.com would be the website. There you go. There you go. So let's jump into uh, this week's Dropping the Needle. 
we were throwing around a couple different topic ideas and i think we're going to sit on one for another week or two because it's it's a hot topic i think it's never going to die down but something literally just popped up in our inboxes um this morning and i read it and i posted it on facebook and i my facebook comment was oh my god i don't even know where to begin with this there's so much to say so we'll post the full link in show notes but uh, today is Sunday, May 4th. On blabbermouth.net, there's a headline. Sebastian Bach wonders why only half of 1% of his Facebook fans bought his new album. And I just, I, me- I read that and I was just immediately, oh, okay. Artist doesn't know what's going on. And it's Sebastian Bach who just loves to open his mouth. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and before anybody says anything, listen... I love Skid Row, the original Skid Row. I have no, I have no desire for the Skid Row that's now. Great <clears throat> musicians, but it's sort of like Van Halen. I had no desire to see Van Hagar. Van Halen was David Lee Roth. Skid Row is Sebastian Bach. When they ever decide to get back together, I will be the first one going to that show. But right now, I have no interest in Skid Row as it is. And quite honestly, I have very little interest. I do follow Sebastian's solo work. But nothing's really grabbed me because it's not very Skid Rowish. Uh, yeah. I I think it I think it kind of is. Uh, I mean, it's more than just the voice, but like his Angel Down record, it really had that heavy vibe that um, that Slave to the Grind had. Right. And that's uh, and which was a couple records ago. I I haven't heard the new record yet. I heard the last one kicking and streaming. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of that one. Um, I really did like Angel Down. I thought that was a great record. That also had a cover of uh, Back in the Saddle with uh, Axl Rose was on that, recorded with him on that on that track, which was very cool. So I, I think it had a Skid Row vibe. I, I, I watched the, the video for his new album, new single, and I think I got three quarters of the way through, and I was just like, okay, it didn't grab me, it didn't impress me, done, move on. Um what whatever you know again to me sebastian bach killer front man on skid row amazing i mean i saw quite a few skid row shows when they opened for bon jovi some solo shows that they would do around that time totally impressed but i think we've also come to learn that um and there's nothing wrong with this sebastian has an opinion and he's not afraid to speak his opinion right you know he knows what he likes he knows what he doesn't like. Um, he may not always be the most accurate in what he's saying, but sort of like uh, dropping the needle on three sides of the coin. It's his opinion, and I and I respect it for that. But sometimes well, I, he says a few things that are going to cause us to have some opinions. Totally, and I think that we should start by by dissecting it a little bit and going back to why there are, he has followers. And I think I posted or answered on one of your emails or your posts earlier today that I believe that it's a thing like anything else. Oh, I like Skid Row. I like 18 to Life. I'll click on Sebastian Bach and like his page. But it doesn't mean that I ever visit it. It's yep. just like I like it just like I like, you know, the, the um, I don't know, whatever, any movie that you want, you know, whether it's The Godfather or whatever it might be. You, you click it because you like it, but it doesn't mean that you follow everything. Well, so, yeah, you know, and I think let, let's let's be real clear. I mean, I do a ton of social media marketing, and I've spoken at seminars and keynotes around the world. Um, a Facebook like at the end of the day really has very little value. Um, it, it's and, and listen, just look at all of our, our own personal and our, our viewers, your own interactions. It's very easy, as Tommy said, to just click like. That doesn't, there's no commitment. You aren't committing to anything. You don't even have, as somebody also had posted, it doesn't even cost you one penny to click a like. So it means nothing. You know, for Kiss to brag about 12 million likes, awesome. But that's not 12 million people who are going to buy anything. I I made a comment on on another thread, because a lot of people are sharing this, where I basically was like, and I've used this analogy on some of my speeches facebook likes are this generation's new penis envy it's all about mine is bigger than yours 
that's all it is. Hey, hey, look at how big mine is. Oh, yours is smaller. Ha, ha, ha. You know, and you can go out and buy pumps and attachments and mm -hmm. make yourself bigger. Well, Facebook, I could buy anybody 10,000 Facebook likes by tomorrow morning for right. probably about 500 bucks. I don't know right. what the going rate is, but you can have as many Facebook likes as you want within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. They're not real. They're fake accounts. They're stolen accounts. They're definitely not fans. All you're going to get is a huge number. And I won't get into the the immense downside of doing that. But I know from experience of being in the industry, there are, and I'm not saying Sebastian has done this at all. I'm just saying in general sense, there are bands that will do that because they think back to the old MySpace generation of, well, you get signed off of MySpace because you've got so many million friends. So we're going to do the same thing on Facebook. It doesn't work. Trust me. The people who are in the industry can see through it in a second and, and know that those aren't real likes. So so to, 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 to get all caught up in your Facebook likes as a band, it's, it's just a waste. It's just that right there was the first red flag of this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. No, and I'm guessing he doesn't engage with his fans either, does he? Is he? Uh, he does. Uh, I think he does more on Twitter. Um, I, a lot of these, uh, a lot of the people on Facebook, you know, they'll post something, and the fans that actually get to see the post, because um, that, and that's another thing too. You can have 12 million fans, but what fraction of them are actually seeing them? Unless you're spending the money to, well, yeah. So, 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 so that's a whole other thing. Let, let, let me let me read real quick what he said here, and then we, we can we can dissect a few of the points. So. Um, Sebastian did an interview with a 14-year-old radio host, Miles the Shoe Schumann. And uh, on his new solo album, Give Him Hell, he sold about 4,000 copies in the U.S. in its first week to debut at number 72 on the Billboard 200. Sebastian, and this is him speaking now, I can't complain because 2011's Kicking and Screaming came in at number 72 on the top 200, and Give Him Hell came in at number 71. So I'm not in a position to complain. But I have to say this. I have, to, I, I, I have got to say the following statement. I have over 800,000 people that like my Facebook page, that read every word I write on my Facebook page. Over 800,000. And yesterday it said... You know how it has next to the amount of people on the page, it says how many people are talking about the page? 75,000 or 80,000 people are talking about it. I would like to thank the 5,000 out of the 800,000 that got my record, and I'd like to ask the other 795,000 people, why are you on my page? Are you there to look at the pictures? Is that why you're there? Because that's simple. If that's what you want, I'll put some pictures up or whatever. But I have no clue. When it says 800,000 people... And 70,000 people today are talking about this. What are you talking about? What? Like, are you talking about laughing? I don't know. I, I don't get it. Like, what? What? And literally, I'm reading. This is, this is Sebastian. What? What? Oh, he's got a new record out. I've loved him for years. I'm not going to buy that laughs. I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't know why you're on my page. Like for what? Why? What? I totally don't get it. The fact that rock albums don't sell a lot of copies nowadays is way beyond me, bro. Country music fans go out and buy the CD. Rappers go out and buy the CD. Justin Bieber fans go out and get the CD. I've got 800,000 people on my page, and 795,000 of them don't get it. Thanks, killer. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, rock and rollers. It's up to the music fans. It's like you read rockers complaining about how, oh, rock is dying and everything. Yeah, you're killing it. Unless you're down at Best Buy buying your favorite band's new album, don't talk about rock being dead because you're the one murdering it. Country music is alive and well. Rap music is kicking ass, so I don't know what to say. Holy crap. There's just so much wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, let's, let's just start right at the top. So... Great, you've got 800,000 people that like your page. And he says they read every word on my page, over 800,000. No, they don't. No, because Sebastian, I, I, maybe, I just maybe went to a, the page. A, a small, a small, small, the way, as, as, as Izzy had mentioned, a small percentage of people who like your page actually see what gets posted on your page. Mm -hmm. No fault to Sebastian. That's just the way Facebook works. Right. You need to understand how Facebook works if you're going to bitch about it not working. 
and right. Sebastian, you don't get it. 800,000 people do not see everything you post. They do not read everything that you post. You might be lucky if 14, 15%, but it could be a lot less than that. See right. everything you post. So right. The, the right, right there is just like, dude, this guy is just delusional to think that 800,000 people are, are on top of what he's doing. And then why are you on my page? As Tommy, you mentioned, well, I might be on your page because I liked you in Skid Row. Well, yeah. In fact, I went just went to his page while we're talking about this, and it says currently he's got uh, seven hundred and sixty-eight thousand six hundred and sixty-five likes. And I've liked this page probably two years ago. This is the first time I probably have ever visited it, other than clicking like in the first place. You know, you and know, this this first of all, this felt like to me somebody who needed a a a, a PR person like Izzy to sit here and go, yes. okay. Um, he needs both of you guys. Don't, don't open yeah. up your mouth. You don't exactly. want to say shit like this because this is going to come back and bite you in the ass. Now we're going to be on spin control because you said something stupid. Right. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I don't think it's as bad as you're making out because I don't know. It, you got to remember a lot of things today just go in one year and out the oh, other. No, no, you're, you're, you're right. You know? but But, you know – wouldn't you rather have people talking about something good than rather, all right, let's talk oh, yeah. about how dumb you are for the next two days. Wouldn't it yeah. you rather have them talking about how great you're doing something with some charity or some massive show as opposed to, listen, he said this to a 14-year-old radio host. I don't know what that radio host audience is, mm -hmm. but Blabbermouth picked up this little portion of the right. interview. So obviously, yep. and listen, we all know when Blabbermouth picks it up, at least for the next 24 hours, yep. boom. And depending on how hot it is, I've picked it up. I've shared it. I've seen at least three or four other people who shared it after I shared it. We're talking about it. We're talking about but we're not talking about him, his new record. We're right. talking about how he doesn't get marketing. Right. He doesn't get his fans. Well, there's right. also that theory, too, that a lot of people say – Hey, any press is good press, no matter if it's good or bad. Sure, no, no. Listen, yeah. I'm the first one to say that as well. Yeah. But, but you know, I think this is one of those things where, as an artist, you need to have a little um, knowledge about what you're going to speak about if you're going to open up and start throwing numbers out and 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 talking like this is the problem and and putting blame on something else. Don't blame your fans. Listen, first of all, it never works out well in the end to blame your fans for not buying your record. I don't right. know. Maybe the record sucked. I don't know. I, I don't know. It. But, I mean, I maybe that's why it. they didn't buy it. Maybe they didn't like it. You know, it, it, it's just crazy. What do you want, pictures? Well, yeah, quite honestly. And, and as Tommy had just done, just before the show, I went and looked at his page just to see what he's posting. And there's a lot of posts. There's a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. But if you really dissect what's being posted... It's all sales. It's all sales in some form or another of here's a new review of the album. Here's a new show I'm doing. Here's photos from my show. Here's something about my album. Here's my show. Here's an interview I'm doing. It's all, it, listen, it's very active and it's better than nothing. But there's something I call the 80-20 rule. 80% mm -hmm. of what you need to post should have nothing to do with selling your product. It should all be about you, your personality, the person fun, entertaining, 20% can be about selling. And there's nothing in there that I, in my quick scan, was just like a fun post of, listen, we all know Sebastian Bach's a huge Kiss fan. Mm -hmm. Right. Does he have one post in the, in the quick scan of just him saying, dude, I just pulled out my Rock and Roll Over album. Listen to it again. Man, I have such great memories of, of dropping the needle on that album. Isn't that cool? That's mm -hmm. it. A post like that is what should fall in the 80%. Right. And I, I didn't just, notice that either. I, I, I think he uses his Twitter more for that kind of stuff. Well, and, and, and maybe he does, but then don't bitch about Facebook, right. Facebook. Because Facebook has to work that way, too, because people, fans, fans want to connect with you. They don't want to connect with your new CD. Listen, if I'm a fan of Sebastian Bach, one way or another, I know you've got a new album coming out. Mm -hmm. I, don't need, I don't need you to beat me over the head with it. 
Well, and also, too, fans don't want to connect with someone that's a PR person. They want to know that who they're getting posts from or seeing posts from is actually the real deal. Right. No, I, so I, I have you, no idea whether it's really Sebastian or not. And, 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 and I guess that's not really the issue here. But it's just missing personality. It's but just, it is, though, because it's the organic content, like you were talking about, posting something personal. A PR person is going to have a harder time <laughs> saying they just put, pulled up rock and roll. I'm, yeah, you know. but, but, but as a PR person, and I do this with clients, um, I ask them to feed me that type of content. Mm -hmm. And then I will post it. Listen, I may make the post on a client's page, but the post is their words, their emotions, their right. feelings. So the fact that it's missing completely either is he doesn't care about it sharing that, the people he's working with don't understand it, but it's 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 that big part that's missing. And and you know, to to, to go on here and say country music fans buy CDs rappers, dude, does he even understand what's going on in the music industry? Apparently not. I mean, by his logic here, I went and just looked. Lady Gaga has like 65 million Facebook likes. So by his logic, wouldn't it mean that Lady Gaga should sell 65 million CDs? Apparently, I, I guess. But I mean, you know, but, uh, but she doesn't. She sells well, a fraction of that. I mean, nobody is selling tens of... I shouldn't say nobody because somebody's going to jump in and correct me. Yeah, There's probably, in a given year, one or two artists that are selling millions of CDs. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We, we all came up through the 80s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, when we all saw and experienced nearly every band with the littlest marketing push sell a million CDs in the first week. Yeah, without an effort. Now, mm -hmm. now, now you'll be lucky to sell a half a million in the first year with right. a huge effort. And it doesn't matter what genre or who you are, um, most artists will never break that threshold. So, so I just, I'm just, I'm just floored by, I'm sorry, the stupidity of the answers here, the ignorance. Well, yeah, I, and you know, I, I think, it, yeah, obviously it's wrong to blame it on, you know, his Facebook. Why isn't he blaming his record company? Isn't it their their job to help sell those records? It's definitely part of their job, but you know, I I will also always say, the first job always falls on the artist. Oh, absolutely. If the if the, if the artist, I mean, let's put it this way: when that that album cycle is done and over with, the record label's gone. Who's left to support you? It's only going to be you. Well, look you at know? what Paul Stanley's doing with his book. He's doing all these book signings. He's out there, so the publisher is helping sell the books, but he's making himself accessible. He's out there. He's signing. I still don't understand why, when an artist comes out with a new record, why they don't just tack on an extra ten dollars on the ticket, and everybody that shows up at the show gets a copy of the CD. You know, I part of it comes back to artists like Sebastian Bach come from a generation. They're old school. Mm -hmm. And it's funny to call Sebastian Bach an old school artist. I know. But it's true. But he, but it's he is. He, he came up in the era where record labels did everything for you. And they spent, and in case of Skid Row, they literally did spend millions and millions of dollars to foot your promotional bill. And mm -hmm. you had assistance. You had full-time publicists for just the tour. And then you had full-time publicists just for the album. Then you had a personal assistance, and you had management, and you had assistance in management. These guys back then wouldn't have to do anything other than read a fax in the morning that says, "Here's where you're going to be and who you got to call every hour yeah. of the day." That's it. Mm -hmm. You don't know why. You don't know what's going on. You're just told where to be and what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know the, the the promotional part of it. I mean, that's obviously when MTV was hopping. So of course, you know they're going to spend million dollars on that video and. And, you know, that's going to get pushed. Yeah, it all just wraps up into that. Now, I mean, nobody's making videos anymore, hardly. I mean, some are. You said Sebastian made a video he's for this. A, he's got a video, but it'll it'll never have the impact of something like an MTV video. No. Oh, no, because but, it's but, YouTube now. You know, it's, yeah, it's on. But it, it could have a bigger impact if it really right. connects and goes viral. I think it just shows that Sebastian and a lot of artists like himself don't understand the Internet. They don't understand social media. They don't understand how to connect with their fans. 
Because I've said in some of my speeches where, you know, in the old days, social media for a band was a record in store. Mm -hmm. You'd mm -hmm. go to, uh, you know, old great American, great, music. great American music, and you and if you were lucky like Kiss, you'd have three thousand fans there, but you might have a couple hundred. And and your social media engagement was a quick, honest, ten seconds, shake the hand, say mm -hmm. hi, I love you and great to meet you and move on to the next fan that, many, that that's actually, go ahead how many people are actually doing that nowadays you don't see that many no very few and they should be oh, just that's... like la guns they're coming out after their shows and if you buy a, a i don't know a ten dollar photo they'll sign it for you they'll pose for pictures that's what they need to get back to because i i'm tired of hearing that excuse that it, they're old school and it was different i mean i get what you're saying mike but for me Th tell me one business that, that hasn't evolved and changed well, but, in the last 30 years. But, but, here, but here's my point of using that as an example. Or, or the other um, social media engagement might be if you were lucky enough to get a, a laminate or a sticky pass, you'd go backstage after the show and you'd get to spend a total of 20 minutes sitting in some catering room with the band long enough to shake hands and say goodbye. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. used to be fan engagement back in the 70s, yep. 80s, even 90s. And and that really was an engagement. You couldn't connect with anybody. You you fans right. fans couldn't you couldn't talk back and forth via mail or phone because you didn't want to give a fan your phone number. You didn't want right. you know if they were going to mail you, you have a mail your management office. Your management office gives you the letter. You write a letter. You give it back to the management office. The management office mails it on your behalf back to the artist. The point being now is fan engagement is so much easier. Good yep. Lord, Sebastian, you've got potentially 800,000 fans on your page and you can reach out at a personal level to a large swath of them all at once and you can completely protect your privacy. You're, you can remain anonymous. You know, there's no way they're gonna get in touch with you, but yet you can reach out and basically shake the hands mm -hmm. of thousands and thousands of fans all at once by clicking like by saying thank you by answering their questions by by being interested in who they are it and it's so much easier you sit here behind your computer you don't have to go to an in-store you don't have to sit behind a table you don't have to shake hands get sick you know and all the downsides that go with hey, wake up on a sunday morning you know before the game comes on spend an hour going through a bunch of fan posts and connecting with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's well, what's well, the beauty of Facebook. Absolutely. And as Sebastian's problem, too, is, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it also takes that whole meet and greet part of it out of it, is that he only wants to do big stages. He only wants to do big shows. You know, that's why he was on tour with Guns N' Roses for two years. Um, that's why he's not doing club dates. He doesn't do club dates. He only does big stage shows, and that takes that whole post-show meet and greet, hey, I'm going to be at this table, come over and say hi, buy a CD and take a picture, out of it. Right. Because right, he right. can't do it. You know, and that I think that hurts him. I mean, it's great. He's getting in front of all these people, but they only want to hear the Skid Row songs because they don't know his new music, because they don't have it, because he doesn't get out there and get them to buy it. Well, you know, okay, let's use his <laughs> same logic, and, and just with your example... If he goes on tour with Guns N' Roses, how many people are going to potentially see Sebastian Bach on a Guns N' Roses tour? A lot. A million? Probably. Let's just say, Easily. let's just throw that out. So why didn't a million people buy his record? I mean, there was a million people who saw him perform live, mm -hmm. and yet he only sold 4,000 copies? Well, yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, there, there's more to this than just looking at that number and going, well, I got 800,000 fans, I should have 800,000 sales. Don't be so right. stupid. Right. right. Well, also, too, when he's doing those opening gigs, if he's doing 45 minutes, there is a large portion of that set, which is skid row music. Sure. And Yeah, and but... Because to need... Tommy's point, that's what they're a fan of him for. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, when he does his, you know, one or two songs from his, you know, from his new band, shit, I'm going to go get a beer. I got to take a leak. Right. All this. Yeah, so I'm going to go take a piss before Guns yep. N' Roses starts. Yeah, well, so then why don't? So the, yeah, but so then why doesn't he sell a package like you can get 
a, a T-shirt and an autograph with this, an autograph CD, for instance, for at whatever amount of dollars. People will do that. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yeah, but, then, again, then but again, you still got to be a fan of Sebastian Bach's new music right. to do that. If, if, to your point, which I think is right, most of his fans are a fan of Skid Row, I don't give a crap about a, an autograph on his new CD. I want an autograph on the Skid Row debut album that I got at home on vinyl. Right, but there, but since that's not a possibility, I think there's a there would be a lot of fans that if it was priced right at a package, yep. they would spend the money and do it. And at least you're putting it in their hands; they're going to at least stick it in their in the uh, you know player in their car when they're on their way home from there's the concert. A, there's a record company called Rat Pack Records, and they deal with uh, they had the TNN, which was uh, George Lynch and right. Jeff Wilson and Mick Brown, um, and they had you know John Karabi, and they have uh, Jeff Labar's new project. And, uh, and the list goes on and on, you know, from that era of, uh, of musicians. And every time a record comes out, they have those packages, you know? Oh, they do. Okay. I, they're, I think they're the only one that's doing them. And, and I think Sebastian's with Frontier, you know, Frontier, Frontier Records, and I haven't seen anything about anything like that. Right. Well, you know, I think, you, and, and, and again, I'm not speaking to Sebastian specifically in this, right. in this statement, but... Uh, a lot of these, quote, classic rock artists um, don't want to acknowledge their past. You know, they, 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 some, some of them don't want to. They, they, they realize they're known for what they did in the past, but they don't want to spend their time promoting and living in the past because then it makes them a dinosaur. And they want to feel like they're still active and, and happening right now. And, you know, let's let's be honest. The reality is... Probably 98, 99% of those classic acts, the only thing people care about, and, and I'm not saying this is right, I'm just saying it's the reality, they care about your past. So figure right. out how to monetize that past and use that past to promote what you're doing now, mm -hmm. but but don't don't ignore it. Don't pr brush it aside and say, I don't want to be that person anymore. I'm right. still valuable and I'm still active and I'm still yeah you are but that's not what you know 4,000 people want it right well it's I, I think that I mean that fact too that goes right down to the record companies that goes down to radio that goes down to not having an MTV that will play the new music I mean I, I was on like I said I was on Rockin' 101 and I fought my ass off to get some of that new music from these bands on there well, yeah, to, to you know? your to your point exactly, you don't the rock bands don't have radio. They don't have MTV. They don't have they they pretty much don't have any traditional media yep. anymore. Their magazines aren't going to cover them. If it's a magazine, it's got a circulation of a thousand, which right doesn't matter. Right. Um, the only way rock bands are going to break, move, and happen is because of their fans. Absolutely is a direct connection to your fans, and if and and if you can get, if Sebastian Bach can get those four thousand fans who bought that album to post on Facebook about how great that album is, that expands your audience. That's your reach. So all of a sudden, maybe seventy thousand people are talking about you, but a million and a half people are hearing about you. Right mm -hmm. and and to not understand how to properly use Facebook, and then to use it in such a way to basically slam it and your fans on Facebook. Why do you like me? It's almost like he was saying, "Well, if you're not going to buy my albums, don't like my page. Leave." Right. Right. Okay. But I'm more than happy to do that. It's no loss to me. It's a loss to you. That's not how you connect and 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 mm -hmm. and promote yourself in 2014 as a rock artist you have to, listen it's back to the streets it's where all these bands started you know we all remember um sunset strip in the 80s mm -hmm. flyers 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 that's old school pass out a flyer that person takes the flyer and gives it to their friends talk they take a stack they pass them out for you facebook twitter youtube it's all yep. the same you're back to what hard rock heavy metal was born from right except now it's a lot easier to do it's, mm -hmm. it's much more efficient i mean good lord how many hours would you have to spend on sunset strip to pass out a couple thousand flyers only at the end of the night to find half of them 
in a garbage dumpster somewhere because a competing band took them all and threw them away. Or covered up. Or covered them <laughs> or up. Or covered them up. So yeah. you don't have that problem nowadays. You got direct connection to your fans. And if you don't know how to use it, shut up and don't bitch. Mm -hmm. Learn. You know, reach yeah. out to somebody like me. Talk to somebody like Izzy. You mm -hmm. know, you can do this. Yeah. Or come on another effing podcast. Yeah. <laughs> what do you need to do? It's just, listen, you know, it's Sebastian Bach. He opened his mouth. Yeah, you know he's clearly not talking about something he has knowledge of, right? And that just makes for a great discussion piece. And, and that's one of the reasons that I love him. Yeah, that's why I love him. You know, Nikki Six is the same way. Gene Simmons is the same way. There's some of these artists who will just open mouth, insert foot, think later. <laughs> well, yeah, like Gene's Twitter. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's like it's cool. That's fine. I totally get that, but. Uh, you know, in, in a case like this, when you're slamming why you didn't sell any more records, well, you really need to understand the business that you're in yeah, now. Absolutely. Because the right. business in 2014 is not the same as it was in 1984. And it's a business. That's the difference. Yeah. You know, and you have to treat it that way and you have to understand how your business functions. Yep. Right. And if you don't, uh, hire someone that does. Mm -hmm. So, any more thoughts about Sebastian? I, I want to hear the new record. <laughs> That's my thought. I want to hear the new record, and I want to hear him keep talking. Go, 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 go! Look up the video. Give it a listen. Let us know what what you think next time. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, hell, I will go down to Amoeba and buy it. Because I'm go. still that guy. I still go down and buy. Are you the gonna records. buy the used one though? No, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. No, new records. I like to go out and buy them when I can. You know. Mm-hmm. I, so like to, I, like to pre often. I like to preview them on Spotify, and then if I like them, I'll go give you the money because yeah. I've been burned way too many times over the thousands and thousands of vinyls and CDs mm -hmm. and cassette tapes I've bought in my life that I'm sorry, there's probably a handful, like five artists that I'll buy mm -hmm. sight unseen, listen unseen. Yep. But everybody but, you know, else, I don't care who you are. I'm I'm buy, I'm listening first, and then I'm buying because I've just well, been that's also changed. too many times. Right. But that's also what's changed because you know, 25, 30 years ago, with the exception of the first single that you'd see on MTV, there wasn't really a lot of places where you could listen before you buy. No, there wasn't. I remember record stores trying to put listening stations in, but they'd always just, Izzy, what are you doing? Adjusting. <laughs> Swinging from the left to the right. Yes. <laughs> hands on the desk. Yes. Hands on the yes. Hands where we can see him, folks. Hands where we can see him. I'm watching hockey. Don't worry. Um, there used to be listening stations like in Tower Records, but they would pick like twelve records. It's not like you could just pull one off of the shelf and go, "I'd like to listen to this whole thing." Right. Well, I think personally for me, it's like if I go out and buy something if I've never heard it. Physically holding it and reading the liner notes and all this stuff, there's a good chance I'm going to like it better if I can do that instead of just eh, skip that, skip that, skip that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It doesn't grab me yet. You know, if I if I put it on, especially if it's vinyl, you know, it, or you know, even a CD, it's like you know, I can listen to it, I can read through everything, and you know, kind of get a feel for it. There's a good chance I'm going to like it better. Right. Well, and that and that's the other thing is is that the younger generation doesn't have that connection like we do. You know, when we grew, you know, growing up with the music and having the vinyl or whatever, and you could read all that stuff and you sat through and like when you bought a new record, you listened to the whole thing from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. You didn't just skip through it. Now, Where did Tommy freeze? What was he saying? Uh, he was doing this. Yeah, you, you, you were Ooh. doing a beautiful Paul Stanley pose yes. for us. Oh, OK. Well, I don't know. It must not have been that yeah. important or we yeah. would have remembered it. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it was a. No, I was just saying that it's just too easy to click through stuff now. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's true. It's absolutely true. So um, let, let's wrap this one up. I want to try and keep under 45 minutes. So okay. head over Perfect. to droppingtheneedle.com, facebook.com slash droppingtheneedle, or on YouTube. Leave us some comments. We need some homework. Here's absolutely. what we need. Some, we need a homework question for this one. So um, something about Sebastian Bach. 
Well, I think it should be two different things. First off, you come up with something about specifically what, you know, what is your reaction to what Sebastian had said. And I'd also like to hear from other people who are, um, you know, fans of rock music, whether it be, you know, Skid Row or Poison, whoever. Would you go out and buy their new record or would you not? And how come? I mean, are you engaged in their page because you like it? Yeah. So, so why do yeah, here's a good question. Why do you like a rock band's page? Mm -hmm. Why? That's a good I mean, question. Will, will you buy music from the bands you click like on or do you follow them for other reasons? And what and, are they? And what are they? And, and, and then do you think it's fair that Sebastian Bach basically said it's the fault of the rock fans that rock music doesn't sell anymore? Let us know what you yeah. think. I'm good with Head that. Head over to facebook.com slash dropping the needle. Let us know. Um, don't know what our schedule is if we're going to do this every week, but we definitely want to get more on a, back to a somewhat regular schedule with this. I think the next show we can just tease. We're going to talk about Joey Kramer from Aerosmith, um, Wolf Hoffman from Accept, and um, creativity in writing songs in the day of the Internet. Mm-hmm. Beauty. Should be interesting. All right, guys. Till next week, or not next week, until next show. Later. I do love you all.